Hello and welcome again to my workshop. Today's video is a CNC routing. It's a continuation from our last video where we put together a coat of arms or shield on a plaque in Kavka. So we'll get over to the 6012 CNC router and machine it. Okay, if you've seen the last uh, video, and I suggest you go and have a look at that, that you'll have then have a full understanding of how to create something like this in Cavco. In the program, I set the start of the work in the center of the material, because this type of relief or job is much easier to start in the middle of the material knowing that you're not going to miss uh, because this piece of material is near exact same size as what uh, the end part is going to be in the, in the central position. Now, normally with a CNC router you'd start on uh, the left hand front corner. That's normal, for, fairly normal for CNC routers uh, but this particular job it's much easier to center the material or have the start datum point in the center of the material. So we're going to fetch the gantry up now and I have the two millimeter tapered ball mill in here. Incidentally this is a solid carbide tool and it will last not quite forever but uh, certainly it will machine 500 plus of these so it's probably well worth spending the extra money for a solid carbide tool so we'll fetch the gantry up now and zero the xy position on the material and i always use a, a pendant i find them very very useful thing to to have so we'll i will speed that up a little bit there we go. Very controllable. Uh, I'd just like to answer one query too. Um, a few of you are writing in asking me why I don't run with the boot on. Well, the simple answer is, uh, normal circumstances, if I'm doing a job and I'm not filming, I have the boot on. Uh, but I had so many complaints of people not being able to see or wanting to see what the cutter was doing, it's better for me to be able to run with the boot off. But I do have fans in here that, uh, you know, I don't breathe in any of the, the dust or anything like that. So. We'll now centre this on, on the job. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to have to do now is actually reposition the head, uh, or the router head, spindle, in its mount because it's not going to reach down far enough. So we'll do that just now. Just a little tip too, uh, before you sort of unclamp this, get a block of wood, just an old piece, put underneath the tool. Don't put your hand directly underneath the tool, because if this drops, you know, this is uh, probably about 10 kilos, it will go straight through your hand. Always catch hold of it, I always actually catch hold of it with my, you know, with the, the shaft in between my fingers like that. So there's no danger of that, but I also back it up by putting something underneath it.
I'm going to call that good and I'm going to set the X and Y in Mark 3 and I'll show you how to do that. What you simply do is go up to one of these little buttons up here and press X0, Y0 and you need to make sure that you're on the work offset, okay? So you have two positions, you have two selections here. This is machine coordinates. Okay, so that's where the machine the that's where the spindle head is in relation to the whole table. And this is where you are setting the start position of the workpiece. So now we're going to set the Z. And there's two ways of setting that. Now this machine is equipped with uh, an automatic Z setting tool. But, you know, not, not every machine has that. But what you can do is just use a bit of paper. And I'll use that, I'll, I'll show you that method now. What you're actually trying to do is find the tip of that tool in relation to the surface of this material. So you just put a piece of paper underneath the tool like this. You set it on Z down, slow setting. And you fetch it down a little bit at a time, a few thousandths of an inch at a time. Okay. There you go. It's just trapped that material. So now we go back to Mark 3 and set the Z0. So now we're ready to start this job. What I normally do, just to, because I'm pretty cautious for whatever I do, is I start Mark 3 up in 20%, or I set Mark 3 at 20% of the feed rate of the program so things are going to happen fairly slowly and the tool's going to come in over here come down and start to move back and forth slowly then when I'm sure everything is hunky-dory I'll put it all the way up to 100%
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the finished item. And when you finish the item and put it in, in a fairly decent frame like this, you can command between 200 and $250 for a custom job like this. If your customer chooses uh, emblems, and certainly if you put a banner across here with their family name in, this is what a CNC router can do quite easily. And it can turn out four to five of these a day. So, and look, you're not going to turn out four or five of these every day unless you have batch orders. But what I'm saying is that a CNC router, uh, such as mine, which is an industrial router, it's a, it's a 6012 with a 2.2 kilowatt and a cast iron backbone. It can earn quite easily, if you have the work for it, over a thousand dollars a day. So that means if you have the work for it, okay, if you build, if you build the business so you have work for it eight to ten hours a day, what that amounts to is you can pay for the machine in a week and you can more than pay for Kafka in a week. So, uh, and look, it, the machine will do it. So, as you can see for yourself, it's a very presentable product and there's quite a value in the product. This is only a small one. You could quite possibly make a life-size one and charge double, triple, even four times the price. So you will see comments below this, uh, this video saying, ah, you can't do that, it's impossible. Well, you actually can. If you prepare to work hard and build the business, you're not going to earn $1,000 every day. But certainly the machine is able to produce work at that rate. So if you've liked this video, please like and subscribe. Also at this point, I would like to thank my patrons because it's the patrons behind this channel that assists it to carry on like it does today. If you go into my YouTube channel, you will find now over 400 videos uh, on CNC routing, uh, CNC milling, laser work and everything about lasers and also wood turning. I do a lot of wood turning. The next group of videos are going to be sort of a lead up towards Christmas because now you know sort of it's mid-November so now you should be making product for Christmas or probably should have started in September so I'm going to show you some product that you can easily make on your laser. Uh, and what it is, it's cut out um, figures and like a Christmas tree. And um, it actually goes together into a 3D uh, model. And we'll put some LED lights in it as well. And uh, I think they're quite presentable. And, you know, everybody seems to like them. So, um, things like that in the next few weeks anyway, we'll be doing lots of product for Christmas. And product that you could make with your machine. So, it's bye for now.